بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار indeed the praise is for allah we praise him we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with allah from the evils that are within ourselves and from our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides no one can lead this person astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray then there is no guide for him. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshiped except for Allah who was alone with our partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the servant of Allah and his last messenger to all of mankind. O you who believe fear Allah with the right that he should be feared with and do not die unless you are Muslims. O mankind fear your Lord who has created you from a single person and from that person created his mate and from them to scatter countless men and women. And fear Allah from whom you demand your mutual rights and do not cut off the relations with the with the wombs that have bore you indeed Allah is a watcher over you. O you who believe fear Allah and say that which is correct and upright in order that Allah may rectify for you your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved a tremendous achievement as to what follows certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam And the most evil of the affairs are the newly invented matters in the deen and every newly invented matter in the deen is innovation and every innovation is going astray and every going astray is in the hellfire As we all know we are in the month of Allah Al Muharram Al Muharram is one of the sacred months from the four sacred months And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he named this month Shahrullah the month of Allah and that is due to the great virtues of this month and that this month is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so therefore we must strive during this month more so than our striving in other months seeking to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking to magnify the sha'air of Allah the outward symbols of Allah hoping for the taqwa of the qulub hoping for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the best that a person can do in this month is fasting during this month 
As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in this narration is on the authority of Abi Huraira, radiyallahu an, أَفْضَلُ الصِّيَامِ بَعْضَ رَمَضَانِ شَهْرُ اللَّهِ الْمُحَرَّمِ The best fast after fasting in the month of Ramadan is fasting in the month of Allah al-Muharram. So this month is a month of fasting. Except that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never fasted an entire month except for the month of Ramadan. He at times would fast the majority of the month so much so that the people would think that he would not break his fast during that month. And then there are times where the Prophet Sallallahu didn't fast the entire month. The point here, Barakallahu Fikum, that this month is like a month of fasting. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described that the best fast after the fast of the month of Ramadan is fasting in the month of Allah Al Muharram. And whenever we hear in the text that something is afdal or something is better to do, this is what the Muslims should strive to attain. You always should strive to do that which is better. Strive to be better. This is how the deen cultivates us. The deen doesn't cultivate us to be evil people. The deen doesn't cultivate us to be lazy people. The deen cultivates us to be good and to strive to be better. So you find in the text the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned Afdalus Siyam Ba'da Ramadan. Another narration on the authority of Jundab ibn Sufyan radiallahu an qala kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul inna afdal as-salah ba'd al-mafruda as-salah fi jawf al-layl as-salah fi jawf al-layl wa afdal wa afdal as-siyam ba'd ramadan shahrullah alladhi tad'unahu al-muharram The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say continuously, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ يَقُولُ Meaning he used to say this a lot. He didn't just say it one time, he used to say this a lot. And this is an indication of him encouraging us to be better. Of him encouraging us to do better. This is from the cultivation of al-Islam, the tarbiyah of al-Islam. Be better, do better, strive to do more than just the average. Strive to be better than just the average Muslim. This is what we get from this teaching of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he used to say, indeed the best prayer after the obligatory prayer is the prayer that is made in the depths of the night. Meaning getting up at night, making tahajjud. This is the best prayer after the obligatory prayer. In the tahajjud, as we know, many virtues. But this is not the time to mention these virtues. The focus here is what comes after. And the best fast after the fasting in the month of Ramadan is fasting in the month of Allah, which you call Al-Muharram. So fasting in this month is from the best of the fast after fasting in the month of Ramadan. Rather, the best of the fast after fasting the month of Ramadan. And this will make the Muslim to be better in his practice of Al-Islam. Better in his worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Better in being one who seeks closeness and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't settle for less. Always try to be the best. Because one never knows whether or not his performance of the obligatory acts have been accepted. And that they were performed in the correct manner. So when a person increases in the nawafil, increases in the supererogatory deeds, this will make up for any negligence in the obligatory acts. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned this as it relates to the prayer, that the first thing that the servant will be held accountable for on the day of judgment is the prayer. 
But if there is negligence in the prayers, if there are defects in the prayer, Allah will command the malaika, go and look to see if he has any nawafil. Go and look to see if he has any extra prayers that he made to make up for the negligence and the obligatory prayers. And likewise the other deeds. How many times have we committed wrong in the month of Ramadan while fasting? Fasting the extra fast is a means of making up for the negligence in the obligatory fast. Just like praying the extra prayers is a means of making up for the negligence in the obligatory prayers. So this here, it should be an encouragement for the believers to take advantage of this month, the month of Allah, and fast as many days as you can during this month. Especially today and tomorrow and the Mondays and the Thursdays and the white days that are coming, take advantage. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, take advantage of your life before your death. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfiru alayhi wa الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين وصلى الله وسلم على نبيه على نبيه وأهله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد سئل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن صيام يوم عاشورة فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم يكفروا السنة الماضية. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked about fasting on the day of Ashura, and he mentioned that the fast on the day of Ashura it expiates the sins for the previous year, and the sins that are expiated are الصغائر, the minor sins, not the major sins. The sins that are expiated, the sins that are wiped out by way of the fast on the day of Ashura are the minor sins. And it is a must that we make tawbah specifically for the major sins. As fasting is not an act that wipes out the major sins. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in relation to fasting, كم من صائم ليس له من صيامه إلا الجوع والعطش. How many from amongst those who fast, the person doesn't get anything from his fasting except for hunger and thirst. And this is an indication that we must take care of our fast, even when outside of Ramadan. Because sometimes when it comes to, or some people I should say, when it comes to fasting in Ramadan, they're very diligent as it relates to protecting the fast and staying away from anything that could uh, spoil the reward for the fast. But then, outside of Ramadan, when it comes to the super supererogatory fast, when it comes to the extra fast, the person is not that diligent. The person is not that careful. He figures, it's not Ramadan, I'm fasting, I'm not eating and drinking, but then his behavior is the same. No. We have to be diligent in protecting our fast outside of Ramadan, just as we are to be diligent in protecting the fast of Ramadan. And if not, then the only thing that we get from the fast is hunger and thirst. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِي فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً أن يدع طعامه وشرابه وكما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. Whoever does not leave or for whoever does not leave or falsehood or the statement of falsehood and the testimony of falsehood or acting in accordance to falsehood, Allah is not in need of the person leaving off his food and drink. That's not only for Ramadan. That's not only for the fast of Ramadan. That's for any fast. 
Whether it is the fast of Ramadan, whether it is the fast on Mondays and Thursdays, whether it is fasting on the day of Arafah, fasting on the day of Ashur or other than that. Any fast that you fast, you must leave off falsehood. You must leave off the haram. And don't downplay the fast because it's not the fast of Ramadan. It's ibadah. It's worship. So don't downplay it. Another point that is important. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, لَأَنْدَ فَيْتُ إِلَى قَابِلْ لَأَسُمَّنَّ التَّاسِعِ that if I was to live to the next year, I would fast the ninth day. Meaning he would fast the ninth of Ashura and the, the, uh, the ninth of Al-Muharram and Ashura. Why? Very important point here. To oppose the people of the book. So this is one of the benefits that we fast today, the ninth of Al-Muharram. This is opposing the people of the book and specifically the Yahud. And this is what our deen cultivates us to do, to be different from the other religions. We have our own way of life. We have the perfect way of life. There's no need for us to imitate the non-Muslims in their religious practices and beliefs. Or that which is specifically for them. We don't imitate them. So the intent of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here was to oppose the Yahud. And we know that they were fasting on Ashura. When the Prophet arrived to Medina, he found them fasting on Ashura. He asked them, what is this? Why are you fasting on the day of Ashura? They said, هَذَا يَوْمٌ Salih. This is a good day. نَجَّ اللَّهِ مُوسَى وَبَانِي إِسْرَائِيلِ مِنْ عَدُوِّهِمْ فِرْعَوْنِ فَصَامَ مُوسَى شُكْرًا لِلَّهِ So they mention this. This is a good day. This is the day that Allah saved Musa and Bani Israel from their enemy Fir'aun. So Musa, he fasted on this day out of showing gratitude to Allah. What did the Prophet say? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, نَحْنُ أَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ نَحْنُ أَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ We have more rights to Musa than you. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fasted. And he commanded that the believers fast. Because in the beginning of the affair, fasting on Ashur was obligatory. This was before the obligation of fasting in Ramadan. And then it became recommended. But the command to fast now is a command of recommendation. But the Prophet added to that, that if he was to live the next year, he would fast the ninth along with the tenth. To do what? To oppose the way of the people of the book. So Abdullah ibn Abbas, he's the one who narrated the statement of the Prophet, if I was to live to the next year. He said, خَالِفُوا الْيَهُودِ وَصُومُ التَّاسِعِ وَالْعَاشِرِ Be different from the Yahud. Fast the ninth and fast the tenth. Oppose them, be different from them. And where does this understanding come from? قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَلَا تَقُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّخُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ Be different, or do not be like those who broke into different parties and sects, and they differed in their religion after the clarity has come to them. That's the way of the people of the book. That they differ in their religion. We as Muslims, we're not supposed to be differing in the matter of the deen. Allah is one and our messenger is one messenger. The deen is perfect and complete and preserved. Why the fighting and the arguing and the likes? Alhamdulillah, the Qur'an is clear, the sunnah is clear. There should be no matters of innovation in the deen, which is one of the greatest causes of, of differing and, and splitting amongst the Muslims, innovation. So when we practice Islam, according to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this brings the unity amongst us. This brings the unity. When we understand the Qur'an, the way Prophet Muhammad understood the Qur'an, and the way he taught his companions, and when we practice the rules and regulations of Islam, the way he practiced and the way he taught them to practice, this is where the unity is. But when this one wants to have his own practice, and this one wants to have his own practice, and this one has his own understanding, his own aqidah, 
different from the aqidah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you're going to find differing and separating and splitting amongst the ranks. Just like the people of the book. Just like them. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, كُلُّ مَا يُفْعَلْ فِيهِ سِوَى الصَّوْمْ بِدْعَى مَقْرُوهَا Everything that is done from a religious standpoint on the day of Ashura, other than fasting, it is a despised innovation. And no one from amongst the imams of the deen have recommended this. Because you have some people, tomorrow, they're going to be cutting their faces and beating themselves and wailing and crying. And then you're going to have another group of people who are going to be partying and celebrating. Both are from the affairs of innovation. Both are from the affairs of innovation. None of the sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een were wailing on the day of Ashura over the death of Hussein. And it doesn't mean they didn't care. But this is not the religious practice of this day. And then you don't find no one from the companions rejoicing over the death and the killing of Hussein, the oppressive killing of Hussein. You don't find them doing that either. But you find from amongst those who claim Islam and attribute themselves to Islam, one group wailing and beating their faces and tearing their clothing and cutting themselves with razors, and then another group partying and rejoicing. This is not the way that Ashura is to be observed. Ashura is observed with siyam. With siyam. With with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not with newly invented matters in the deen. So understand, the Prophet sallallahu was saying he would fast on the 9th of Al-Muharram. There is a bigger point and matter to be understood just from, the, just from, or other than the matter of fasting. And that thing is to oppose the people of the book in their ways. And from their ways, introducing things into their religion that Allah did not legislate. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us from amongst those who hear a good word and follow it. Wasubahanaka Allahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubi ilayk. Aqim as-surah.